Okay, so I've been using Vim as my editor for years, but I kind of kept uh, it very uh, default, which a lot of people say you're not supposed to do with Vim. You know, you're supposed to customize it to your needs, and they are 100% right. The reason I, I'm one of those people, I try to keep things as default as possible so that when I go to a new machine, I'm comfortable with it and I'm not missing out on all the little tweaks that I do. Um, but, you know, recently I just uh, did a series on Vim and it got me more into Vim, and I've spent the last couple days really just putting a whole bunch of stuff in my VimRC file and uh, learning more about it. And I've done a bunch of stuff that still is needs tweaking, but I want to show some of you today uh, just how quick you can get things done. So I, I do a lot of interfaces for my programs using HTML and uh, Twitter Bootstrap. So uh, let me just show you how quick and easy it is to create a site. So right now I'm in a directory with nothing on it, nothing in it. And uh, this is the directory. You can see there's nothing in there. So let's make a, uh, a PHP file or an HTML file. But I'm going to do PHP, and I'll show you why in a moment. I always try to do PHP because uh, server-side scripts are great. Anyway, so I'm going to say vim index.php. Now, real quick, I hit, and these are my personal settings, uh, which I do have up on GitHub. So I'm just showing you how quick things can be done once you get set up how you want. So I'm just going to hit comma HTML and I've generated a default HTML file that's basically what I normally use. A lot of stuff is commented out. Those are scripts that I sometimes use, sometimes don't. I'm trying to, trying to learn more about them. But it automatically puts me into the title tag here and I can say my site. I can save that and if I switch over to my browser here and refresh you can see we have this basic site uh, with just a basic little list here. So uh, let's now go down to the body down here. And let's say I wanted to add, an, add a nav bar. All I have to do is comma nav, and it adds a nav bar, and I can give uh, the title of the page there. So I'll say my website. And now when I come back here, I refresh. I have a title bar. It says my website up here. I have some drop down menus. This is mobile friendly. This is what it looks like on a mobile device with the drop down menus. So so far we've got a pretty good page going so far using Twitter Bootstrap, and I so far I've typed just a few keys. Uh, so let me now go to the bottom of the file. And down here at the bottom of the body, I'm going to uh, hit comma modal, and it added in the code for modal. So I can come in here, refresh. Example, I can hit open, and it adds in a little you know modal message box. Uh, so so that's great. But the reason I mentioned that I'd use PHP files because I like to include stuff. So stuff like your, especially your navigate bar or modals, it's like you're going to use that same code on multiple pages within your site or application. So you don't want to have it embedded in each page because you're going to have to then modify it. Every time you add something to the nav bar, you have to go and modify it in each file. You don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo these last two changes. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to split my screen and I'm going to create a file. I'll call it nav.php. And up here, I just hit comma nav and I'll save or give it a title here my site new and I'll save and close that now back inside my HTML file here or my PHP file um, I can type in again these are my codes I'm gonna go iii space and it creates a PHP include here and I can say nav and I oops nav I cannot type today nav I can even auto complete that I can save that refresh and it looks the same but my code here is a lot cleaner and if I change that nav file any file that I included in will be changed as well again I can also go down to the bottom here and I can do something like this I can say iii space and now I can type in modal uh, and I can auto complete that file did I call it modal did I create the modal file yet did I call it P modal php let me see whoops I keep talking, let's see. I can't type anything properly today. Oh, I guess I didn't create it yet. That's right. I thought I did. Talking too much. So let me go ahead and split the screen again, but this time I'm going to call it modal.php. And in here I'm going to say comma modal. And I can save that. And now when I refresh this, this down at the bottom here, you know, so I mean, in real life probably wouldn't have this button. So what we can do is we can link these options here in the uh, little list here to open up the modal. So what I can do now is I can go uh, back up to here and I'm going to say uh, CCC space and I've created a click function and I'm just going to say A. So anytime an anchor tag is clicked, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in box. So it's going to run a box function. So let's go ahead and create that function now. 
So I'm going to go FFF space, and I've now created a function. My, uh, my tab completion, uh, tabbing, still needs a little tweak on some of this. Um, but uh, we'll just say box. And in here, I can type in my mo uh, capital modal space, and I've just toggled my modal. And when I come here, I can refresh, and now I click on any of these, and the modal appears. I've also can come down here to underneath my list or above my list. Let's go. Let's go above the list, inside the uh, container here. I set up so I can go BBB and hit space, and I create a button. And when I refresh, you can see I have a button there. And if I want a group of buttons, I can come in here and I can do four Bs. And um, uh, my tab completes a little messed up on that, but that's again I'm still working on this stuff, uh, and uh, and that's because my file is labeled as a PHP. I need to set PHP files to auto indent like HTML. I need to set the file type is what that is. Um, it's just something I still need to tweak. So I, I'll call this oops button, and you can see it looks like another button, but I can copy that, and it's a group of buttons like so. And like so, I can copy that, and I can paste a few more of those and now I've got five buttons going across another great thing you know uh, Vim also has a built-in um, increment counter so let me let me undo this so let's say this is uh, button zero okay Oops, zero and let's say I want to create a few buttons and number them and in real life you actually would type this into your code your code would generate it but if we want to make a static list of buttons that are numbers, just as an example, what I can do is I can use Q to record a macro. So I'm going to hit Q and Q again to save to the Q macro. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to YYP to paste. I'm going to forward over to here. And on that number, I'm going to hit Control A, Control A, and anchor it in one. And I'm going to hit Q again. Now I can hit at Q and it runs that code again incrementing the number. Now I can just go at, 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 so I'm hitting shift and uh, number two on my keyboard. And if I wanted to make, uh, you know, 15 of these buttons, well, I guess it'd be 16 because they're starting at zero. Anyway, if I wanted to add 10 more of these buttons, I can type in 10 at, at, and I've added 10 buttons. If I want another 100 of them, I can go 100 at, at. And now, and that's actually going to look horrible <laughs> because uh, they're all going to be on the same line with that. So there, I just made 100 buttons right here. So... <laughs> Uh, let's undo that, and uh, but that's it. I just wanted to show you, you know, again, this is something I've been working on the last couple days. Still needs a lot of tweaks, uh, but I can create stuff so much faster than I used to, just because I've learned a little bit more about Vim. So I recommend you don't follow suit with what I've done the last like five years. I've been using Vim and actually modify it, and uh, and also uh, people say this, and I 100% agree with it is don't just copy and paste someone else's VimRC file. Look at what they have there and use what works for you. Customize it for your uses. That's what I'm doing for myself. And a lot of stuff I'm doing, uh, actually a lot of stuff I've just showed you, I wrote one way yesterday and then I rewrote a lot today to make it work even better. So I'm going to continue working on it, making it better. I suggest you learn a little bit more about Vim and the VimRC file. And as always, please visit my website, filmsitechris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description, as well as a link to my Patreon page if you want to support me over at patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope that you have a great day.